Welcome back. If you remember back to the first video, we made up a situation with a school where I described what, what would happen when a fire alarm went off, how the, you know, how a, a pole station or smoke detector would short out an initiating zone, how the horns would go off. We made videos on both of those, how those things happen, um, how the fire doors would close. We kind of described how the fire department would know where to go once they got there. Um, we talked about how the fans would shut down, which is kind of the same way the fire doors would close. But we haven't yet talked about how the fire department got the call in the first place. So, I drew a couple of things here. I drew a, a school, my best attempt at a school, my best attempt at a fire station here with the little fire truck out front. And there's another building here. So, usually, there's a, there's a few different ways that you can that you can send your fire alarm signal to the fire department but it never goes directly to the fire station it always goes to a dispatch center um, now sometimes sometimes that dispatch center is actually located as part of the fire department so it would be you know right here attached to the fire department sometimes that's the case but not always so you, let's just say it's it's remote. It's not actually where the fire department is. And usually there's a few fire stations in a town. If the town's big enough, there's more than one. But for our purposes, let's just assume there's one school, one dispatch center, which is a, usually not a very obvious building, which is kind of why I drew it the way I did, and then a fire station. So the signal will go, in most cases, from the school. Oops, I'm in the wrong tool. From the school to the dispatch center and then the dispatch center will call usually via radio they'll call out you know the fire department actually I'm not really sure what that signal is how they how they have that message but it'll go to all the fire stations and it'll tell them which one has to go whichever the closest one is they'll tell them so how does that work well there's a, there's actually a lot of different ways you can do that and there's a lot of different ways people do do that and we'll, we'll go over all of them but for right now I'm going to present to you um, a digital dialer and there's a lot of different types of these, um, but we're going to take a very a very basic one. We've already talked about alarm relays and trouble relays. This is part of a fire alarm panel, which is why I kind of drew the dotted lines here, where you could just assume that the fire panel has more things. Obviously, obviously it needs initiating zones and, and NAC circuits and all that. But let's focus on the alarm relays right here the alarm relay right here and the trouble relay right here and we also have 24 volt power down here so there's a few different types of dialers but there's one my company uses a lot which is called a 411 dialer I can write that here it's a it's a 411 dialer and I can't really write with this pen so I forgive me that's why everything's typed um, 411 dialer and the way this works it's almost like a mini fire it's almost like a mini conventional fire alarm panel you could see I drew some zones in here zone 1 zone 2 zone 3 and let's assume there's only these three zones some of them have four um, but often three is all we I think three is all I've ever used right now we're only going to use two of these and it, you can plug a little handheld programmer into this to program a lot of data into it and it's it's very it's very necessary but just to give you kind of a big picture before we before we um, get too far into this the fire alarm panel has to tell the dialer what's going on it does that via the zones and you'll see that in a second then the dialer converts that signal into a digital signal and it calls it out over a phone line the same as the phone line in your house or if you're like me you no longer have that phone in your house because um, we don't need any more with cell phones but you know the old landlines it'll use those and it always needs two of them it needs a primary and a secondary and eventually we'll get more into this and, and, and talk about how the secondary one can be shared with a fax machine, but the, the primary phone line has to be dedicated to the fire alarm system. But for right now, we're not going to get into the details. We're just getting we're just covering basic concepts. So the fire alarm panel has to somehow tell this dialer that there's an alarm or a trouble. The dialer converts it to a digital signal. Then it's going to send it over the the you know the phone network that exists throughout the country, throughout the world, etc and it's going to call it it's going to call a specific number just like if you're trying to get a hold of somebody you would call whatever that person's number is well these if I were programming this dialer I would have to know what the receiver number was and I would program in that 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 number so now I'm gonna bring into the picture here uh oh let me redo that 
I'm going to bring into the picture. Actually, if I cover up that four eleven dollar, that was that didn't look too good anyway. So that's for the best. So this is my attempt at drawing the equipment which would be in this dispatch center in this brown building up here. So we 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 said that this was ah, I'm in the wrong tool again. Of course I am. We said that this was the dispatch center. So let's say that in one room of this place we had this rack of equipment. You know, hopefully you've seen a a server room where there's a whole rack of equipment. There, you know, there's there's different things, but just just to get the idea for right now, you're gonna have a phone line, a primary phone line, go to a phone jack. Secondary is going to the secondary, and then these are gonna go. Well, they're gonna go into the ground and, and through the whole telephone network, but eventually they're gonna end up coming into this equipment. Both of them will. So this, this dialer converts it to a digital signal. The, then this will make a phone call when something happens. It will go out over the phone network into this equipment, which interprets it, that signal, that digital code that it gets, and presents it to a dispatcher who can, who then it will just say, fire alarm at address, whatever that school. Let's say it was, uh, I don't know, the address was 1000 school drive it's going to come up on their screen as such and they'll dispatch the fire department but how does the dialer know that it's an alarm well it's got different zones like I mentioned a minute ago and this works like a conventional fire alarm panel so this is just looking for an unaligned resistor when it sees a resistor it's happy zone 3 we're not even going to use so zone 3 just like on our fire alarm panel when we didn't use it it just sees a resistor we have a little resistor and it's happy and now I can program at the head end what each zone means because this is just going to say okay zone one is an alarm when it goes into alarm it's going to convert it to a digital signal it's going to call it out over the phone network and then the dispatchers are this is going to be this has to be programmed for what that means so usually zone one is alarm so what I can do here is I can use my alarm my relays on the fire alarm panel to create the short that this thing needs to go into alarm if you remember when we when we talked about the conventional panel we said that the panel needs to see a short for it to go into alarm. It needs to see an increase in current. And the dialer is the same way. So let's say we take our positive out of our dialer and go to normally open here. And we take our negative and go to common. Now right now, this is not a complete circuit, right? The positive and negative are not touching because it's normally open. And we'll put our resistor across the two. As you get more into this, you'll find a little bit better place to put your resistor, but again, we're just doing basics. So, now I have my resistor. So if we follow our current path here, what's happening? Well, it's going, let's say, from negative. It can go all the way to this point, to the to the normally closed point, but it can't go anywhere from there because this, this switch, the common is not switched. So it's just going to go through this resistor, back to positive. So all zone 1 sees is a resistor right now. Zone 2 is typically set up for trouble. We're going to do the exact same thing we just did. Now our, it's probably going to get a little close together here. We're going to go positive to normally open and negative to common. And then we're going to get our resistor. So right now the panel's clear. All both of these, all three zones see a resistor is happy. The other thing I meant to mention is on these external dialers, they need power. They need to be powered up somehow. So we have 24 volts. This would be non-resettable power, which we described before. That means that even if I walk up and push reset on the panel, this power is not going to drop out. I'm still going to have 24 volts. So now we'll run our 24 volts power to this dialer so that it can actually work. All right, so now it's got power. All of its zones are clear because all it sees is its resistor which like we talked about before would be the same thing if I just put a resistor right on any of these zones it would be happy and again there's a code there's a digital code in here for every signal so if it goes into alarm it, it converts it to, to some sort of a digital code which to you and me might mean nothing but this receiver knows what that means it knows that whatever digital code it presents it's going to convert that to a signal that an operator sitting in that little brown building I drew they'd know what that meant so let's say let's say we get a fire alarm let's say this shorts out this relay changes states Let's see, this is gonna. So the panel goes no alarm. Now, 
common goes from normally closed, it switches over to, to normally open. So now essentially these black and red wires short out, right? Because it's going through the it's going through here, that's it's a dead short. The zone one's an alarm. It's gonna send out a signal over the primary phone line. It's gonna go to this receiver, which is gonna be converted into a signal that the dispatcher can interpret and it'll come up with the address. This will all be programmed when the when the account's set up and they'll know there's an alarm at that school for that reason. Now this is an example of an external digital dialer. There's a lot of other types of digital dialers. There's other types of there's other ways that they send alarms from a building to the dispatch center. We'll cover all of them. Um, but this and we'll we'll cover this in more depth in the future. But this was just a basic idea of how a digital dialer would send an alarm to a fire department. I've kind of reached the time limit. I've actually passed the time limit I like to stick to of 10 minutes, so I will see you in the next video.